What is up, people? Welcome back to the setup today. I got a technique that we're going to talk about that's very dear to the heart, only because this is the very first technique that I was shown as a kid when it came to technically bass fishing, right? And that's the flipping setup. And so we're going to go into depth about flipping, a couple of different styles of flipping. You know, you got anywhere from what I would consider light flipping to, you know, regular flipping to heavy cover flipping and then all the way up to what we call punching the big weight and the big nasty grass mats and things like that. Um, but I just want to break it all down for you and, and kind of show you guys how I set up my flipping techniques given the particular scenario. And so let's jump right into it, man. Um, we're going to start with what I would call just regular flipping, right? Not heavy cover, not light, just regular flipping. And so for, for when, I'm, when I'm just regular flipping, I'm almost never using line less than 20 pound test, okay? And so I'll start with 20, I'll go up to 25, and in very rare cases, I will go up to 30 pound fluorocarbon. All three of these are gonna be fluorocarbon fishing line. And so the regular flipping, you know, that's the, the lay downs, your, your flooded bushes, docks, uh, big boulders, rocks, things like that, that I can visually see where I need to get a very specific placement and cast in there. That's why we choose the flipping stick. Um, and I'm more of a new school flipper. Let me say this, because when I was taught how to flip back in the day, and I don't know, in the 90s when I was introduced to it, we did a lot of what they call scissor flipping. And those that know and know of the legend D. Thomas, who invented the technique, he's also from right where I grew up, right there in the San Francisco Bay Area. His stomping grounds was the Delta, and he developed this technique we all love today called flipping. And that's the old school grabbing your line, picking out your target, and we, this is why we call it scissor flipping, because you bring in your hands back and forth, back and forth like a scissor, and you can very strategically place a bait in short proximity. Well, us, us younger kids, as that technique kind of grew and became more popular, us younger generation, we started doing more what we call pitching, right? And that's where we take the, the reel, and we use the reel and rod, and we pitch it into places that we want it. And I'll be honest, man, that's how I fish. I, don't, I no longer scissor flip. I used to do that growing up as a kid. I probably stopped doing that 20 years ago, you know, maybe longer. Um, it's been pitching for me, which to me, they're one and the same. So I'll say I'm flipping, and somebody else might say, no, you're pitching, and it's nothing to argue about. Nevertheless, I'm getting a bait in a very specific spot. It's in close proximity and I got the right rod reel in line in order to do so. And so let's jump into it. So I'm regular flipping. Here we go. This is my signature series rod with favorite. This is a favorite hex. It's a seven foot eight heavy action rod. You do not, I repeat, you do not want to attempt flipping with a lighter action rod. You don't want a medium heavy, you don't want a medium, and you definitely don't want a light. You want a heavy action rod. The whole idea behind this is you're oftentimes fishing in and around heavy cover. You got to be able to move those fish. If you can't move them, you're losing them. It's just that simple. And so that's why we go with a, a heavy rod like this favorite hex right here, MDJ series, seven foot eight. We go with a high speed reel. Okay. So this reel right here is an eight to one gear ratio. I want to make minimal turns of that handle and get that fish out of there ASAP. Okay. And then you need the big line. The big line prevents you from getting broke off. And so, like I said, I'm using Seaguar fluorocarbon. In an absolute rare scenario, more open water flipping, I might go to 17, but that's just, that would be just a one off. But I'm always throwing 20 or 25 uh, Seaguar Abrasex. And that's what I have in my hand right here. Um, this is actually 25 pound test. Uh, and this is kind of like what I like to start with, to be honest with you. Um, and then I'll, I'll find myself backing down to 20 if it's a little bit of a lighter cover scenario, but I like 25. Big line, big weights, big hooks, the whole nine. So let's talk about the weights and the hooks on this. You know, you, you, can, go anywhere, you can go anywhere from weightless. You know, we flip a lot of stick baits like a lunker log, a six inch lunker log. I might flip weightless with no weight at all. 
Um, I might put a small weight, an eighth ounce, a three sixteenth. And then on my standard flipping setup, I'll probably go all the way up to a one ounce on the fluorocarbon for this particular flipping setup. Then I use almost exclusively two size hooks, a 3.0 and a 4.0. And those are both by owner and they're straight shank hooks, okay? I really do not like an EWG hook. A lot of guys like EWG style hooks. If that's what works for you and you're confident in that, I'd say stick with that. But for me, especially when the money's on the line, I'm using a straight shank hook. I feel like the straight shank hook has the most bite. The gauge is properly made for those heavy cover situations and I lose the least amount of fish on a straight shank hook. That's just my personal preference. Um, again, and, and, and something I wanna tell you guys too, as a tip, I see a lot of guys flipping bushes and heavy wood scenarios, log jams and things like that. And they're using braided line. Man, I, I really, really don't like braided line in a wood scenario. The braid cuts into the wood and you cannot get those fish out. Whereas the fluorocarbon, it's, it's more rounder, it's smoother, it doesn't have a tendency to cut into the wood. It allows me to get those fish out a lot better. So that's just a little side tip. Something to think about. I like fluorocarbon in a wood scenario, uh, and then I like braid in a grass scenario. Speaking of braid in a grass scenario, we're gonna jump right into that. So this is my more heavy cover flipping setup. When I say heavy cover, I'm talking almost exclusively grass, okay? So whether that's your hydrilla, your emergent grass, hydrilla, milfoil, eelgrass, things like that, or even my topped out grasses that live on the surface. So my water primrose, my gator grass, my water hyacinth. That's where I'm going with this setup right here. So again, this is my rod. This is the MDJ series favorite flipping stick. It's a hex. Um, I'm using 50 pound Seaguar Tactex braid. If you guys have been following the channel at all, if you watched any of my previous videos, you guys know how much I like this line right here, um, especially in a grass scenario. So this is a four carrier braid. Very rough, very abrasion on the outside. It cuts grass like no other. You gotta have that when you're fishing heavy grass, okay? You don't want fluorocarbon in this scenario whatsoever. You want something that's gonna pull, cut, no stretch, get them out of there. And that's what that line does right there. Of course, you need a high speed, a high speed reel. This is a, a, a seven to one on this one. I would, I would recommend, okay, I got obviously two different reels here. I would recommend using a reel, nothing shy of seven to one for flipping. And then I would stay away from your super high geared reels. Like I've seen some that are like nine and 10 to one gear ratio. I personally would not use those. And the reason why when they're geared super high like that and you flip in there, five pounder eats you, you set the hook because it's geared so high and now you got so much tension on that rod and reel, you can't get the handle to turn. I have found seven and eight to be like that happy median where you can actually get it going and wrench them out. And then you want to stay away from the too slow of a reel, your four, your four eight to ones, your five to ones, your six to ones, because then when they shoot out of that mat and they come darting at you, now you got nothing because you can't turn it fast enough to catch up. And so you want to have a little catch up, but you still want to make sure you got some power to wrench those fish out. And so I found that the seven to one and the eight to one get the job done. I, I try to not go above those two. Um, but yeah, back to the grass fishing. Um, on this setup, I'm going anywhere from a three quarter ounce, generally, five eighths, five eighths, anywhere from a five eighth ounce all the way up to an ounce and a half. And that's starting to get into the punch in the mats and things like that. Um, on the hook, same deal, a 3-0, 4-0 straight shank owner jungle flipping hook. That's my hook of choice, straight shank. I can't stress that enough. Uh, and then I like smaller compact baits. I love the Bandito Bug by Guggen, the standard, and I like this little guy right here. This is the Junior, 3.3 inches, gets in and out of cover really good, and it's just a fish catcher, man, it gets bit. And so these are just a couple baits that I like, but you know, obviously use the, use the, the plastic of your choice, whatever you like, that small, compact. Stay away from baits with too many appendages. They get caught up on everything. It's all about efficiency getting in and getting out. 
And uh, last but not least, I didn't have the rod up here, but in those super thick grass mat scenarios, I'll opt to go with a two, two and a quarter ounce weight. And in that scenario, I'm not using my rod. I'm using Andy Morgan's rod for that. That's a seven foot six goat rod. Really durable, strong, heavy flipping stick that I feel really confident putting a, a giant weight on there, right? So like not an ounce and a half, but anything from, I'm gonna say a one and three quarter up to a two and a half ounce is what I throw on Andy's rod. Uh, and oftentimes that's what a four aught hook, but still the 50 pound braid uh, and a high speed reel, you know, that's gonna get it done. But uh, that's pretty much it on the flipping setup, guys. You know, this is literally one of my favorite ways to catch bass. You know, it's crazy. I get out here on tour and I just don't find myself doing it quite as much as I would love because there's so many other techniques that prevail as we travel across the country. But uh, every once and again, they get on the old stick, man, and you can pull out the flipping stick and, uh, and do some work. And it's just an old school, basic technique that every bass fisherman needs. It doesn't require forward facing sonar for all my haters out there. <laughs> but uh, it's a visual technique. You see your cover, you see your targets, and you know exactly where you need to put it, you know? And this is something you can practice at home in the backyard, flipping in a cup, flipping under a chair. When I was a kid, man, I used to go crazy doing that. Sitting in the backyard for hours, flipping underneath chairs, and little, I'd set up a little, a little target course, and I'd be flipping all over the place. My mom think I was crazy, but I was getting better at the technique, and so it's cool, because you can work on this off the water. So um, again, just wanted to tap on that. One of my favorite techniques. Drop me a comment, you guys. Let me know what technique you guys want to see next on the setup. I really like doing these videos because it's not all about going out and catching bass for me anymore. It's like I really like teaching and sharing the knowledge that I have, um, whether it's you know basic, intermediate, or advanced. However, man. So uh, again. The flipping, the, the, the flipping setup, man. This is where it's at. This is the meat and potatoes of bass fishing right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop me a comment, like, subscribe, all that fancy stuff, man. And we'll see you guys on the next setup. Have a good one.